So while James plays the role of the mad scientist in the tent once again, I'm afraid to say that this is starting to get a little bit rough out here. We are soaked already and I think risking the equipment seems like a very, very bad idea. It's even soaked Brian, which is unusual under our roofs. Although it seems to be a little bit better now that we've put these two flaps down, except that they want to flap all over the place. Though we're probably not going to risk our equipment. We're going to see what the return to the DRC, go and join James in the tent for now, and then see how the weather changes. It doesn't look like it's going to change. It's still pouring down. And of course, with our TV show happening on Monday, we definitely don't want to soak any of our equipment and break anything. But somehow I feel as though, since we, it's not as though we didn't have any warning. Somehow I feel as though the powers that be might be terribly unimpressed with us. Don't you think, Brian? Yeah. yeah. Now, Elena, you want to know if we have wind and rain gauges at the DRC. We have a weather station that should, in theory, record all of these things. The reason that I say in theory is that, well, let's put it that way. Let's put it this way. I've heard some very interesting measurements. Now, it automatically, it used to automatically send out an email from Graham. So we'd get two drops of rain and immediately our inboxes would all ping saying, it's raining at Juma. My voice echoes in this roof. That's hilarious. Um, so yes, I'm not, the accuracy might, might, may or may not be fully accurate. Look, I mean, it's, it's gonna be, either we're gonna get 200 or we're gonna get 50. It, I think it's gonna be quite a lot. I doubt 200 though. But yes, we do in theory have a rain gauge that should email us. Fortunately, we no longer have the it's raining at Juma emails, but it would be entertaining if we did at this point.